We're going to watch the 100 meters for men. Sir. And Michael oh, Rosswest oh. right in the center gets off to a blistering start once again. He's undefeated on this tour so far. Patrick Stevens of Belgium going well. But look at Michael Rosswest come away. Patrick Stevens in second place. And it could have been Chris Neertling in third. A marvelous run there for Michael Rosswest. Plenty more good athletics to come at the Engine Grand Prix meeting final here in Stellenbrosch. You can watch it on TV1 Top Sport later this week. Brought to you by Engine. Proud sponsors of Athletics South Africa. Well, good evening and welcome to Stellenbosch and the grand finale, the final of the 1995 Engine Grand Prix Series. With me, the two men who are leading the race for the overall title, Steve Backley and CJ Hunter. Steve, second time in South Africa, plenty, plenty of form, 77 metres. 87. 87 yes. metres. <laughs> Best throw for two years. That's right, three years, in fact. I've uh, really delighted with my early season form. Um, didn't really know what shape I was in. I think that was half the reason for coming down. I trained very hard all winter. And uh, off the back of winning Europeans, it was, you know, all systems go, no problems, no injuries. So, yeah, delighted to come out in the engine series and, and produce an 87 in a throw, hit, uh, what is it, first in the world rankings this year. So, delighted, couldn't ask for more. But obviously, the big target of the year comes later on in Gothenburg. Yeah, later on in Gothenburg is obviously the key, and throwing 90 metres again. I've gone over 90 metres a few times in my career, and I'd like to do it again this season, maybe tonight. World record out of sight at the moment? Um, I think it's something that comes as a matter of you know, long preparation and staying clear of injury, and that's what I'm planning to do. Just keep ticking away and, and improving, you know, not too fast, in control, and, and really just be sensible, you know? Well, thanks a lot. So turning to CJ, your first trip to South Africa, has it met up with expectations? It's a lot better than I, what, what I thought it would be. You know, coming from the States, all we see is what's on the news, what's in the media, and that's mostly the negative aspects of what's going on down here. But there's been a lot of change that people around the world don't know about. You know, I'm pretty happy with the situation. Eight to nine puts already over 20 metres. What can we expect tonight? Uh, if the weather's good and the wind doesn't start blowing, hopefully I'll go 21 tonight. Have to do something to beat back. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck to both of you anyway. May the, may the best men win. Thanks. We're turning now to, uh, to Gareth, Gareth Griffiths of the Sponsors Engine. Gareth, uh, we've had a few problems. We all know about those. But on the whole, you must be very happy the way it's gone. Martin, yes. I think very much with a series after five years of sponsoring this event we really think it's come home and we have recreated what we were hoping for all along which was a night series of athletics engine is very pleased about that especially when we look at the people who are asking to see um, television on uh, athletics on the television and the base of those people they really represent the whole rainbow spectrum of south africa's nation um, and 50 percent of them are female as well um, I think that's very significant because half of our customers who use our petrol are female too. So yes, the engine is very pleased. We're going to try and make our promise that with uh, our customers um, are number one. And with this number one Olympic sport, we're hoping it can only go from strength to strength in, in this new South Africa. And as for the future, are we going to see engine banners around an athletics track next year? Well, I think we've kind of achieved almost the status of being the major sponsor of, of athletics and we are proudly associated with athletics south africa so it looks to me like that augurs very well for the future we're very pleased with the way athletics has uh, realigned itself and uh, they've got a very strong administrative core now um, it looks like the elections are over and they're off on to a, a very good start so we wish them the best of success and yes uh, with them will be their partner engine um, we're sure into the 1996 season as well thanks a lot gareth look forward to seeing you next year let's hope so anyway before we actually get on with the athletics tonight, let's take, look at, uh, take a look at our regular package, Inside Track. Athletics is the sport of the people. Rentmeester Assurance share that ideal, bringing you affordable assurance. South African all comers record, six meters, six meters 85. 
and that will be the target. Good speed and tremendous height off the board. The past week, the International Athletics World was shaken by the news that German long jump star Susan Titke Green tested positive for a banned substance. She was informed about the positive test when she arrived at the Engine Grand Prix meeting in Krugersdorp. Doping is strictly forbidden and is an offence under the IAAF rules. The offence of doping takes place when either a prohibited substance is found to be present within an athlete's body tissue or fluids, or when an athlete uses or takes advantage of a prohibited technique, for example blood doping, or when an athlete admits having used or taken advantage of a prohibited substance or a prohibited technique. When a doping offence has taken place, disciplinary proceedings will take place in three stages. The athlete is suspended from the time that the doping commission reports that there is evidence of a doping offence. The athlete then has the right to a hearing before any decision on eligibility is reached. She also has the right to ask for a second sample to be tested. If the athlete is then found to have committed a doping offence, he or she shall be declared ineligible. The ineligibility starts from the date on which the sample was provided. Gunther Eisinger, specialist advisor to the German Meetings Council and also coach and manager of various top German athletes like Heike Henkel, is currently in South Africa with a group of his athletes. He has been fighting for stricter doping control in his country and shortly after the story broke on Monday evening, he explained to us why Germany now has one of the strictest systems in the world. She got tested in Germany from a German controller. This is bad for Susi which is a real poor situation, but it shows that the German testing system really works. It works real hard, but I think it's the only way to go further. And the only thing we can hope and uh, I can hope that every country will go this very damned hard way. But if we do this, maybe we'll have not so much problems with dubbing uh, problems. South Africa has entered a men's and women's team for the 17th IAAF Reebok World Race Walking Cup to be held in Beijing, China from the 29th to the 30th of April 1995. During the previous competition held in Monterey, Mexico 1993, our men's team finished 15th out of 32 countries. For the experience gained at the previous competition, as well as the excellent performances of our race walkers over the past few weeks, the men's team could very well finish within the top 10. The team members are Chris Britz, Rikus Bluchnot and Stanley Valentine in the 20 km section. Johan Moerdijk, Oliver Moerdijk and Andre Elsen in the 50 km section. And the women's team are Felicity Falconer, Debbie Beckley and Barbara Nell who will be competing over a distance of 10 km. Since we have last taken a look at our World Championship qualifiers, the list has grown substantially. Here then, the athletes will be anxiously awaiting the announcement of the team to Gothenburg. Finally, tonight sees the third and final Engine Grand Prix meeting of the current summer series, which means payday for some of the stars. At the end of this meeting, the overall points leader will receive a winning check of 25,000 Rand, and it looks like the fight for first place will be between the big man from the US, CJ Hunter, and former world record holder, Steve Beckley. Athletes will score the normal amount of bonus points for records and top performances on the Hungarian points table, but this time, however, they will score double points for placings. This is also the last major competition before the SA Championships in Durban on the 28th and 29th of April. So stay tuned for some great action. Stellenbosch looking absolutely magnificent. The stadium bathed 
in the sunlight as it sets over the mountains. A wonderful track and some wonderful performers here at the end of this engine summer series of Grand Prix track and field athletics meetings. Well, the weather, it's not looking too bad. There's a bit of a breeze coming up the home straight at the moment and uh, it's rapidly cooling and I think that could make a difference. But once again, Chicky, the engine mascot coming into the stadium and uh, well, the children are loving him and this is all part of track and field athletics, the razzmatazz that we now come to expect. With me in the commentary box, Tony Frost and Ray Wixell. And Tony, I'm sure you're looking forward to uh, a good evening of track and field entertainment. Yes, I think uh, the engine uh, series has come of age and this final will show that. CJ Hunter and Steve Backley battling it out at the top. It's gonna be a fascinating competition between the two of them tonight. CJ Hunter has given notice that he wants uh, to take it, uh, the trophy home with him. And with us also here is uh, Philip Spies, our top South African. Orchid Brits are just a half a point behind him. So they'll be battling it out to see who comes out top as far as the South Africans are concerned. And Ray Wixell, I think, looking forward to seeing a lot of good middle distance running tonight. Indeed, Paul. Uh, not only do we have good weather, we've got some good competition here this evening. We've got a jam-packed stadium of about close to 14,000 people. The Razamataz continues. We wait to go forward to the first event, but guaranteed will be some wonderful performances from foreign. Come back, and the first event we see is the men's 400 meter hurdles, and that's superb South African record by Dries Forster, set in Pretoria in 1989, of course, still stands. The full lineup will come after we see the top five in South Africa this year. Grant Roberts, of course, 49,96, a time which he set in Petersburg, but since then he's been beaten in the second Grand Prix event. The full lineup is very impressive. Nobody in lane one, but in lane two, George van Reinen, Petsi in three, Eugene van der Westhuizen in four, Grant Roberts that we've just been talking about, the fastest in South Africa in five, Johan Steinberg in six, Mario Turian in seven, and Tom McGurk of Ireland goes in lane eight. Grant Roberts looking incredibly determined as he settles in his blocks. He was in superb form a fortnight ago in Petersburg where he set his first Set. ever time below 50 seconds. And they get away this time after a considerable hold-up. And Grant Roberts has gone absolutely blasting out of his blocks. He draws level with uh, Van der Vestesen, who's gone off very quickly as well. But Roberts closing in already on Johann Steinberg. Grant Roberts flying down the back straight. He's already opened up a gap between himself and Steinberg of uh, some four or five meters. On the very inside, it is Smith, the late entrant. He's actually going quite well, catching up uh, Van Reinen. But uh, the split at 24 comma one five at 200 meters that's fast mario turin going well tom mcgurk of ireland just fading a little bit as they come into the home straight but grant roberts and van der vestesen almost rising together two to go in fact mario turin having a great race here grant roberts has got to find a little bit now grant roberts is battling away it's turin who's going to come home first i think maybe just roberts gets it and Steinberg was there as well. The clock hasn't stopped, but it was quite quick. Just a shade outside 50 seconds, I think. Now then, has Grant Roberts just done it in time? We'll have to wait and see. Well, that was a real test of character. Grant Roberts down the back straight, looked as though he had it buttoned up, and then Mario Turin came through just around the corner, and you can see what happened here in the home straight. Just a little bit of overdetermination, perhaps, from uh, Turin. 50 meters from the finish grant gave grant roberts the gap and we'll have to wait and see what the officials say paul said uh, turin i think roberts i think you're probably right seeing that uh, action replay there roberts may have lost his second race in a fortnight when really he was the fancied favorite but a superb race well that's the final result and indeed it was grant roberts 51,34 Therene in second place, 51-36. Just two hundredths between the two of them. And Steinberg in third place. 100 meters for men is up next. And Johann Rousseau in Johannesburg recorded a time of 10,06. That was one of the fastest in the world in 1988. And the lineup 
after the 100 meters for men, the top five best performances in South Africa this year. Rian Dempers, a hand time 10.1, but we know he's in superb form, and that's followed by Johan Venter, a 10.40. And the lineup is a fascinating one. Francois Dutoy goes in lane one. Francisca Nordi goes in two. Leighton of Finland, a pole vaulter in three, but reportedly he's run 10,3 seconds. Michael Rosswest, winner of the previous two Grand Prix events in four. Erki Newell, one of the world's best decathletes in five. Patrick Stevens, the Belgian record holder in six. Chris Neertling in seven. And Alan Riemann in lane eight. Michael Rosswest, the fastest man in this field. Olympic Games finalist in the 200 meters back in 1988. He's absolutely dominated sprinting in South Africa during this series, and he's flanked by Erki Newell, the decathlete, on the left, and Jan Leitonen of Finland on the right-hand side, one of the world's top pole vaulters. Set. They get away first time, and Michael Rosswest absolutely blasting out of his blocks. Look at this, Patrick Stevens going well, the Belgian champion. But Michael Rosswest coming away. I think Patrick Stevens in second place will have to wait for third. 10,36 seconds. Tony, that was very impressive. A wonderful, right from the very start, this man just powered his way through to the finish. Absolutely superb starting from Ross West. He was uh, chased to an extent by Patrick Stevens, but it was a Ross West benefit from the very, very beginning. Just look at that power right from the very beginning. Michael Ross West getting into his running stride at about 50 meters, and there was no way anybody else was going to be in the race at this stage. Patrick Stevens battling away in third place. Well, we'll have to wait and see. It could have been Chris Neertling or on second lane, Francisco Nordi. But Michael Rosswest is the king of Stellenbosch over 100 meters tonight. Completely dominant in the series, Michael Rosswest. Superb running throughout. Patrick Stevens in second place. And in fact, it was Chris Neertling who finished in third place with Francisco Nordi chasing very hard. Stellenbosch absolutely packed to the gunnels, and Ray Wixell, this is going to be a tremendous benefit to the athletes here tonight. Indeed it will, Paul. It's nice to see a crowd like this, and, you know, I believe Engine's the one that brought the crowd out here supporting athletics, and we're going to see some good events tonight. Kalyan Canellison takes the athletes in this women's 1,500 meters through with 800 meters to go. Ashling Malloy from Ireland is in second place. She's really a specialist 800 meter runner. Then Julia Sakara. But I think we felt, Ray, early on, the pace was a little too slow. We were hoping that some athletes would go below 420 today. But uh, I'm beginning to wonder whether that's the case now. Indeed, it was too slow. They came through 400 meters at 69, and that's too slow if they really want to run under 420 this evening. We can see it there on the screen, 67.7. But here we have Ashley Malloy, the national record holder for Ireland at 800 meters. And then we got Julie Sakala with the personal best of 411 tucked in third. Gwen Griffiths, she ran a great race in Paris two years ago at 1500 meters, that 404. And there she lies in fourth position, in perfect position actually, because it's always that element of surprise that last 150 millers. But it's Cornelius in on the inside. She has a personal best of 204. And Julia Sakara preparing for Gothenburg in this race, Paul, with the 411 personal best. But she's the danger woman. And Gwen Griffiths just looking outside and inside her. The bronze medalist at the Commonwealth Games, of course, last year, as Cornelison takes him through with 400 meters to go. Malloy has had a bit of a rest since Petersburg. She was a little bit injured after that. But uh, she's come back strongly and she's having a good race. But here goes Griffiths. Sakara always looking dangerous, always looking strong. And this looks awesome at the moment with about 300 meters left. Well, I like this, Paul. Griffiths just waked up the field here with 350 meters to go. And Julie Sakala is really going to have to run that back straight away in order to catch her. But I like this surprise running with Griffiths. She's run 15.29. Let's see if her strength can pull her through. But Julie Sakala, 2 1 already this year. It's going to be very tough to beat her, Paul. Well, Sakara unbeaten in this series over 800 meters. Now the 1500. But let's not forget that Gwen Brick Griffiths beat Sakara in the Commonwealth Games final. So has Griffiths got anything left? Cornelison is left in third place. Malloy in fourth. But here comes Julia Sakara, and the crowd really appreciating a fine tactical run. Sakara holds all the 
for national records from 800 meters upwards at distance running. Griffiths in second place, Cornelis in third, Ashling Malloy a good run in fourth place. Well, the time actually looked quite quick. We'll have to get the official time a little later on. But once again, a fine race from Julia Sakara. Red Masters Julia Sakara is still undefeated in South Africa with a time of 4.12.16. And Gwyn Griffiths, a fine performance in second, 4.13.9. And Cornelius and the youngster wrapping up the top three in 4.16. Full lineup: Maria Blackburn, Fantafian, Ulrich, Ace, Van der Merwe, and Leslie Ann Johns in the outside. Third. So we'll have to see whether Lana Ace can continue her winning streak. She won in Petersburg, but it was only third in Krugersdorp. She's out in lane six. But at, uh, at the moment, the last two lanes, Adri Van der Merwe. Out in lane seven is absolutely flying down the back straight. She's having a good race already. The national junior champion. Lane one, of course, is empty, so don't bother about that one. The athlete in lane uh, three, Danielle Blackburn, is having a good race here. But at the moment, Van der Merwe is really flying. And on her shoulder, Lana Ace now beginning to make her impression on this race. Alan Van der Veen now. Just two flights to go as they come into the home straight. Karen van der Veen it is. Just at the moment from Ronel Ulrich and Lana is just uh, struggling a bit. But this is going to be a real sprint for the line. Lana is it is who comes through to take it. And it'll have to be a photograph for second. But Martin, full of drama that 400 meter race. Well, that's the best 400 meter hurdles women's race I've ever seen in South Africa. Three girls line abreast at the last hurdle. And look, it goes to show just how important meeting that final hurdle is in this event. Ace coming off at the best, and at the line, she's got about half a meter over Karen van der Feen there in four and Ronel Ulrich. But good to see Karen van der Feen back. She wasn't going to compete at all this year. But there's our winner, Lana Ace. Well, Martin was absolutely right. One of the finest 400 meter hurdles races for women in South Africa ever. Lana is eventually the winner, but any one of those first three would have been a very happy winner in a very, very good 400 meter hurdle race. Fritz Potlita in the third round of this discus competition. He's been in fine form this year. Very imposing figure in this discus circle, and he moves very quickly. That looks as though it's a fine throw, and indeed it is. Vladimir Dubrovchik of Belarus is there. He's the World Cup champion and the European champion, but it looks as though Fritz uh, could have uh, pushed one out into the arena, which will take the lead. Well, safely inside the circle, no doubt about that, but apparently have been having some problems with uh, fouling the circle. But excellent technique, holds the discus high, gets right into the center, and then a very long pull at the end. Fritz in fine form, heading surely towards 60 meters. Just short it is, 59,64, but very definitely in first place. Vladimir Dubrovchik ranked first in the world last year, winner of the World Cup and the European champion. He comes from Belarus, but he's having problems in this discus competition, and they're mainly to do with the circle. Oh, that looks as though it's another foul. He thinks he stayed in. That looks as though it could take the lead over Fritz Potkita. But look at this, he's complaining about the edge of the circle. The rim is not the size it should be. He was moaning about this yesterday in training. And really, Dubrovchik not happy at all in this discus competition. Watch this again. It's all to do with the left foot at the front. He should be trying to jam that against the rim. But uh, the rim is not there. It may have been bashed a few times by some hammer throwers in their uh, training program or in competition but it's just on the right hand side as we look at it tony he's got a lot of problems here he certainly has and there's no doubt that his foot went over the room whatever the case may be the uh, circle is the same for all of the athletes and i guess he's going to have to put up with it
Abdullah Abdullah from Morocco, one of the fastest men in the field, brings the 1500 meter athletes through with just about 500 meters to go. This time they'll hear the bell and th they're really bunching tightly. So Ray, I'm just wondering if it's the best sprinter who's gonna win this race. Well, Paul, it sure will, but they came through very slow, two minutes through 800. And here you see Ippens from Belgium. He took the lead and the guys are going very, very slow. You're gonna see the guy with the fastest kick really put it on. The guy's got to move here now with 300 meters to go. 301 through 1200, very, very slow. And let's see where Warren Nevo is. He's got a brilliant kick, 250 meters to go. The guys are really flying. There we see Warren Nevo. And also we see Faro. He's also a 340, 1500-meter runner this year. He won the Volkswagen 1500, but there goes Warren Nevo, Paul. Well, Uso Faro still has the fastest time in the country this year at 340,32, but he's struggling just a little bit. What a Nevo who won in Krugersdorp with a very fast finish. Brings this crowd to its feet. Here comes Lansman as well in second place. And the Moroccan trying to force his way through. This is going to be a devastating finish. The Moroccan gets it from the vote. Landsman perhaps took third, but it will be a photograph. But I just wonder whether there might be an objection to that last 100 meters. That's the first race that Abdul Haq has won in South Africa. And Ray, it was full of drama. Well, we can see the drama in slow motion here. Really pushed his way through Lonsman and Warren Nevo here. And he really was determined to try to win this race. And that's the best I've seen him so far in South Africa. But there may be a foul here, but he barely outleans Warren Nevo. And Farwa, I think, came in third position. Well, Kutzenberg is the happy hunting grounds for middle distance athletes. Abdullah Abdul Haq, a superb performance this morning, uh, this evening, just winning in the last 60 meters. Wadniva chasing hard. Ezio Faru still very good, and Johan Lansman a little bit of disappointing on the night. 100 meter hurdles for women. Karan van der Veen in Pretoria in 1991 set the South African record. There's the top five this year, Sanet Fushir. She's also top of the long jump rankings as well, 13,41. Lana Ace, 400 meter hurdle specialist in second place. And the full lane draw for this 100 meter hurdles, Pretorius, Van der Skaif, Miriam Tashomba of Belgium in lane three, Solly of Norway in four, Sanet Fushir in five, Adri van der Merwe in six, Leslie Ann Johns in seven, and Arnel Jacobs in lane eight. That means they qualify to vote. Sonette Fouchier just settling herself before she goes down on her blocks for this 100 meter hurdles for women. The strongest competition comes inside her and to the right hand side on your screens, which is Lena Solly of Norway and Miriam Tashomba of Belgium. But Fouchier, the fastest athlete in South Africa this year. Oh, Solly seemed to get away very quickly. So did Tshamba and Sanet Fushir going well. It's those three. Solly going well. Fushir going well. It's neck and neck all the way as they come home. Solly may just have it at the moment. And it's going to be a photograph. I'm not going to put money on the winner. But Alina Solly looked as though she may have just got the dip from Sanet Fushir, but it was very close. We're having some absolutely superb athletics here in Kutzenberg tonight. And this is one of those events. It was neck and neck right from the very start. They came out of the block absolutely superbly, both of them. And it's really uh, neck for leg and neck for neck over the hurdles. Absolutely superb technique. Lino Sully, a little bit of hesitation over that flight. But then it's really wonderful rhythmic running from both of these two top class athletes. And that was really come of age this season. And her competitor from Norway on the inside, Lino Sully, a desperately close finish, and I would not like to be a judge tonight. Alina Solly, it was for the second time in a row, 13,67, just one hundredth of a second ahead of Sanet Fushir. And Van der Scape having a very good race coming into third position. Fritz Parkita here in the discus once again certainly the master of this discus circle here tonight and once again demonstrating very good technique he's become an absolute master he's still a young athlete lots of potential many years still of uh, good discus throwing ahead of him silver medal in Seoul in the juniors in 1988 
a man with great talent. Just watch the speed of this big man through the circle. Absolute control and wonderful control of that arm as he lets go the discus and somewhere around 60 meters, I'd guess. And very good control as well to stay in the circle. He's certainly got the better of the European champion here this evening, Dubrovcik of Belarus. And this man, if given half a chance to compete against the best in the world in Europe and America, I'm sure he would give a good account of himself. There it is, 59,62 in first place. Well, some more international competition is what Fritz Porchita really needs now. He has the technique, he has the speed, he has the size. International competition, here comes Fritz, Fritz Porchita. <laughs> That's the South African record of the men's 200 meters, but of course, Rian Dempest time that he set just a fortnight ago, still pending. The full lineup will come after we see the top five best performances in South Africa this year. And that's Rian Dempest time of 20,16. Absolutely superb. Now the full lineup is also impressive. Marcus Legrancy in one. John Lawson in two, Francisco Nordi in three, Riemann in four, Dollar in five from Switzerland, Patrick Stevens of Belgium in six, Erki Newell of Estonia in seven, and Michael Rosswest of Great Britain in eight. Oh, Michael Rosswest, already winner of the 100 meters, really got a flyer on the outside. Erki Newell, a decathlete specialist, is going quite well, but inside him, Patrick Stevens of Belgium, a 200 meter specialist. He's got the better of Rosswest at the moment. David Dollar of Switzerland going well. What has Ross West got left in those legs? It's going to be a real battle to the line, but Stevens gets it from Michael Ress And I think the home athlete of Francisco Nordi may have got third place. Well, that uh, running around the corner is actually what did it for Patrick Stevens. He came out of the blocks very, very quickly. And you see here the advantage that he has as he comes into the home straight. It's a meter, but one meter in 200 meter running is everything. It counts for everything. You've got to make up one meter over 100 meters and for Ro Michael Rosswest tonight, that was just a little bit too much. Excellent running from the Belgian and a time of around 20.6. Good stuff. Excellent running it was by Patrick Stevens, the Belgian record holder. 20,76, beating Michael Rosswest. Nordi coming through into third place, beating, beating the decathlete Erki Null from Estonia. Dickie Broberg and Marcello Fiascanaro still the official South African record holders, but surely it's destined to go in 1995. This is the top five performances in the 800 meters this year with Ezekiel Sepeng, 145,36, and Johan Bota in second place. Ezekiel Sepeng, Ray, Surely the record must go this year, and surely this must be one of the men in South Africa who will take it. Well, in order for Sepang to really take it, he's got to concentrate on that third 200. He's been coming through at 50.51, and South African athletes really have to push that back straight away in order to get the rhythm going. He's got a fine last 200 meters, but if he wants to break 145, it's got to be done in that third 200. Well, Ezekiel Sepang is wearing what some American sprinters call their re-entry shades tonight. So uh, perhaps we can see a fast first 400 meters. And right in the outside lane is the 400 meter hurdle of specialist Grant Roberts, whose task has been set at taking the 800 meter men through 400 meters in round about 50 seconds. And that would give them a fighting chance of breaking this record. Indeed it would, Paul. Bring him through at 50.51, but they got to concentrate on that third 200. they got to come through 600 meters at about 116 to get the rhythm going and follow up with a kick of 27 seconds. But look at this crowd in the background. They're really getting into the race, but it's Grant Roberts bringing him through with Sean Abrams, also 148, 800 meter runner in second position. But there you have uh, the top three all running very strong. Well, it's McQuenna in third place, and there goes the time. 50,99, Grant Roberts has done his job well, but Ezekiel Sepeng has really got to dig in now. He's coming through into third place, McQuenna just on his shoulder. 
But Grant Roberts is certainly taking it on. He's done his job well, but look at this. He may even be going on towards 600 meters. Well, Paul, it's too much of a gap. He should have been on Grant Roberts' shoulder because he brought him through perfect, 50.99. But here they come through the 600, way too slow. Sepang's going to have to do it on his own. But here we got Marius Van Yeren, also 146, 800 meter runner. But it's Sepang really having to dig deep. But look at Marius. I love this brilliant running. We're going to see a real turnaround here. Jogens Kutzer, 146.9, Paul, line in third position. Well, Jogens Kutzer has the crowd rising, and Kutzer it is who's going, going to come through. Jogens Kutzer is going to take it. Sepang is finished. The time is not going to be fast, but it doesn't matter. Jogens Kutzer, the absolute perfect last 200 meters. He was in the right position all the way. And uh, while well, Sepang, a bad race there, you can see the result. That devastating finish by Kutzer. Well, Kutzer, the champion. Kutzer, the champion in Stellenbosch. He's still not the leader in the country this year, but he certainly defeated the rest of the field very well indeed in the 800 meters. A very fine performance by Jogens Kutzer, winning this brilliant 800 meters in 146.67. Marius Van Heeren in second position, 147.02. And Johannes McQuenna rounding out the top three in 147.63. We've seen some marvelous action here. The crowd, which is the top five performers in South Africa this year, Stefan Lindeke, who goes in this race, 13,83. Two athletes have been under 14 seconds. The full lane draw. Marcus Lagrancy, who won three gold medals at the Junior Championships in one. Van Sale in two. Hubert Grossard of Belgium in three. Dutoy in four. Thomas Kearns of Ireland, who won in Krugersdorp in lane five. Stefan Lindeke, top man this year in the country in six. And Jonathan Nsenga in lane seven. After one faulty start, Thomas TJ Cairns of Ireland, the Irish record holder, settles in his blocks. The world and European semi-finalist. This is his left, Stefan Lindeke, the fastest man in South Africa this year. Get away this time and see who's the first to rise. And in fact, it's Francois Dutoy. But TJ Cairns has got a bit of work to do. And Jonathan and Senga on the outside. The Belgian record holder is really flying. TJ in all sorts of problems. It's Nsenga who comes through. In fact, TJ Cairns may have been even run out of third place. And he looks to be in a bit of trouble. Lindeke came through late as well. But Nsenga did what he did in Petersburg. He won that comfortably. And TJ is all over the track. Yes, he finished in what appears to be a bit of pain, but it was right from the start, in fact, that Jonathan Senga started to turn on the power. Absolutely superb hurdling, nice and low over those hurdles. At this point, TJ Kern starts to get into all sorts of trouble. Difficulties begin to compound, as they always seem to do in hurdles, and Jonathan Senga just runs away with it in the end. A fine, fine run from the Belgian champion. Well, TJ Kearns is still down on the track. Even in Senga there had a bit of difficulty, but it was Lindeke who came through in second place, and it may have been Dutoy in third ahead of TJ Cairns. But this is the man, the Irish record holder. Attention will be given to him. He'll be back, that's for sure. But Nsenga has won the hurdles. Well, a very fine victory for Jonathan Senga, the Belgian champion, 13.87. What a sadness for TJ Kearns. Still managed to finish in fourth place. Real character from the Irishman. Stefan Lindeke, Francois Dutoy, second and third respectively. CJ Hunter now in the second round. His first round putt was absolutely massive, but he got the red flag. So he now has to settle himself in this second round. Sits low. Tremendous speed at the end. And it's over 20 meters. Certainly very close to that 20-meter line. And CJ Hunter, since he's come to South Africa, is just looking better and better. No doubt about that. And he will tell you that the start of the throw is absolutely critical. If the start goes wrong, the rest of the throw will also be out of kilter. And he concentrates very, very hard on the very beginning of each throw. Very important. Certainly, Tony, one of the best rotational techniques I've ever seen in shot putting. He really lifts that shot at the end. He doesn't fall away very much, and that's important in rotation. And of course, his speed through the circle for a man of his size, absolutely phenomenal. 19.56, he'll definitely go over 20 tonight. 
CJ in the third round, and that's over 20 meters. He really knows he's unleashed a great throw this time. So CJ Hunter in superb form in this shot put competition. Tony, you said he'd go over 20, he's done exactly that. And he's very happy with his over 20. Just goes to show what specialization can do. This man does only shot. In fact, when I asked him about uh, discus, he said, man, don't ask me about that stuff. I only know about shot. And it really shows. Over 20 meters, and that uh, is what he's looking for tonight. Absolutely consistent. Over 20 meters, all of six throws in Krugersdorf. He really wants to win this overall Engine Summer Series Grand Prix title. He could have done it with that putt. 20,58. No doubt about it. He's in first place. That's the 100-meter record of South Africa in the 100 meters. It has stood since 1990. That's the top five performances. Alinda Vorster, 11.1, a hand-timed uh, time there at the top of the ranking list. And Stain in second place, 11,2 seconds. So the lane draw for this 100 meters, Jacobs in lane one, Fender Merva in two, Linda Forster in three, then Alina Solly from Norway in four, Sailing, the World Junior 200 meter champion in five, Esmerie LaRue in six, the athlete in lane seven has pulled out, so it's Laurence in lane eight. Alinda Forster right in the center of the picture, one of the most experienced sprinters South Africa has ever produced, semi-finalist at the Olympic Games and at the World Championships. Ida Siling, world junior champion in lane five. See it. Foster got away very well indeed. So did Lena Solly, but it's Alinda Vorster at the moment. Ida Siling's got a bit of work to do. Esmerie LaRue is really flying as well. But here comes Foster now, and it's in fact Esmerie LaRue from Belleville. I think she got it 11,73, and that is a real turnaround of form. What a turn up for the books. I don't think anybody would have put money on Esmerie LaRue to win this particular race in the company that she was running. Great start there from Elinda Forster. Very good start from Solly, and it's only about 30, 40 meters out that Esmerie LaRue really starts to fly. At this point, it was still Elinda Forster, but just watch LaRue come through. Absolutely focused, total concentration, and superb running from Esmerie LaRue from the, the, the home city. Elinda Forster, a desperately close second place. Well, what a surprise, but what a wonderful victory for Esmerie LaRue. The Belvilleites here in the crowd must have absolutely jubilated tonight. Yolinda Forster, second tonight, but a good second at that. Steve Backley looking for a bit of crowd support here. The European and Commonwealth champion twice over and undefeated in South Africa in the last two years he's been here. And a contender for the overall Grand Prix winner. Oh, this is much faster than it was in Krugersdorp. Superb technique and well over 80 meters. The crowd has really risen to that throw. Steve Backley was saying before the meeting today, he'd be happy with something round about 84 meters. He thinks perhaps he's lost a bit of form since Petersburg, where he threw 87 plus. But this is absolute textbook stuff. Precision before the line. He comes in at such tremendous speed. Watch this. The arm absolutely straight. The drive with the arm and the lift with the legs. I think Steve Backley one day could be the holder of the world record. It won't be tonight, but it's still a fine throw. 81,52 meters. Yaka Snyman really has been producing some fine putts this season and came through strongly in Krugersdorp to take second place. Well behind CJ Hunter, of course, but nevertheless leading the domestic field. Like CJ, very good rotation and very fast, and that looks a good putt. The Snyman's best in Krugersdorp, his best of the season, 18,38. A little smack of the head there tells you that perhaps the technique on this occasion 
wasn't as good as it could have been. I think he needs to stay a little lower across the circle. But like CJ, demonstrating a very complex technique in a very confined space and doing it well. There you are, that's the result. He's in second place with 17,34. CJ Hunter for my money was the best athlete on show tonight. 20.58 in the shot put for men. Jakob Snayman getting better with every outing. Like to see how far he can really go when he gets into international competition. Rian Demper is going through his usual routine of looking away from the starting blocks at the beginning of this 400 meters for men. South African record holder at 200 meters, that's senior and junior. The South African 400 meter champion and the top junior 400 meter runner in the world last year. That's what's needed at the beginning of a race of this quality. Total and utter concentration. And Martin, this could be the day the South African 400 meter record falls. 45-01, Jakob Reiner back there in 1983. What's that, 12 years ago? It really is about time that went. And Rion Dempers, really, look at that, 45-49. That was the winning that national junior title. Boban Curry just a tenth or so behind. Of the lane draw, Mabaso, Malharaba, Dempers, Visaki, Bobang Piri in six, Wally and Engelbrecht in lane eight. So Rian Dempers, he's got to chase Alfred Visaki outside him. And then Bobang Piri, the target for this young man, who is a real world-class star over 200. And this, the 400. Well, expect a very fast first 200 meters from Rian Dempers. He's got no fear on this track whatsoever, but Bobang Piri has gone out quickly, and Aaron Wally outside him. This is Wally's home track at Stellenbosch. But Rian Dempers really flying down the back straight. The crowd are going absolutely crazy for this man. They want to see something special, and 21,56 could be what they've uh, been asking for. Bobang Piri is coming back. Rian Dempers looking a little bit tired. He had a very tough weekend last weekend in the juniors. It's certainly Bobang Piri in second place with Vasaki inside him. But look at the gap. The crowd shouting, come on, Rian Dempers. That's the time. It's outside the South African record. It is a world qualifier. 45,65. Disappointment. But there's no need to be because they've seen one of the world's most exciting talents over one lap. There's no doubt that was the performance of the night. And 45-6-5, well, it may not compare on paper favourably with that performance at Germiston or indeed that one at Secunda. But this is at sea level, remember that. And on a night when performances haven't been perhaps as good as they have been in recent weeks, well, that's certainly the performance of the night. And uh, for a man who's going to go to those world championships in Gothenburg, probably over 200, a good, a good late season run. Well, I, for one, look forward to seeing Rian Dempers in the World Championships in first place here. And not only that, I look forward to seeing the South African 4x400 metre relay team, which could reach the final and do extremely well. Steve Backley comes to Stellenbosch, unbeaten in this Grand Prix series. In fact, unbeaten in two years of competition in South Africa. There you see his personal best, over 91 metres. That used to be the world record. Very light on his feet. And a big pull through with the arm. Oh, that's very long again from Steve Backley. And Tony, I think you enjoy watching this man because technically he is superb. I love watching Javelin and I especially love watching Steve Backley. And uh, one thing that always impresses you about Steve is how well coordinated he is. Look how close the spear is next to his head. It's absolutely lined up, coordinated, and he uses every bit of the speed that he has to excellent effect. Just look how uh, straight the arm is. He maintains very good running speed, doesn't he? Despite the fact he's got to go through the withdrawal of the javelin and then the final throw. He's not a particularly strong man. 
but he certainly has produced a good throw here 82 comma 22 all over 80 meters in first place the pride of South African javelin throwing at the moment, Philip Spies, and despite the fact he hasn't had a coach for the last four years, he improved his personal record to 84,02 at Petersburg just a fortnight ago. So Philip Spies really always gives everything he's got in these javelin competitions. Good speed and a really solid throw at the end of this competition and very close to going over 80. Tony, this man, if he had a coach, the quality of Steve Backley's, he could really be a world beater. There's no doubt about that, and he's a very good learner. When Tom Petrano first came here, Phillips' throwing improved immeasurably, and if he could spend a bit of time with the likes of Backley and a good coach, he would throw over 80 consistently. It's just not as tight and as coordinated and as well organized as Backley's throwing is. You watch his arm, it doesn't go as far back and as straight as Backley's does. The, the javelin isn't as close to his head, and as a consequence, he loses valuable distance. But a fine throw from Philip, nevertheless. Well, rarely do you meet somebody so committed to athletics as Philip Spies, but a good second to Steve Backley. We've become used to throws over 80 meters in South Africa, perhaps a bit spoiled by the Backleys, the Hills, and the Petrano. Superb javelin throwing here tonight. Two athletes over 80 meters. Nobody can complain about that. One of the world's great distance runners. Ishmael Karui of Kenya leads the athletes through the 5,000 meters with four laps to go. Shadrach Hoff is sticking to him like glue. Jean Vester is there. Jacques Van Rensburg in fourth place. And Karui, well, he was brought here to give Shadrach Hoff a real good chance at breaking the South African record. Ishmael Karui, a marvelous athlete. He's just recently broken the world record for 10 miles on the road. He's also the reigning world 5,000 meter champion. And really, Ray, have we ever had an athlete of this quality in South Africa running distance? No, we haven't, Paul. This is fine front running by career. He took over right about uh, 2K. They came through at 522, but Shadrach Hoff looks brilliant in second position. This is what our South African athletes need. We need this international African competition, especially the Kenyans. You had John Vestier also tucked in third position. You had Jock Van Rinsburg there just after six last but boy the gap has just widened here but it's a two-horse race if career can continue to push the pace they came through at eight minutes through three kilometers that's right on sa pace but it all depends here on the last few laps what they can do paul so shandrag hoff who broke the 5000 meter record here in february so he knows this track well the supporters that have really packed into this stadium to watch the engine grand prix final know this athlete well but Ishmael Karui really is the man in form at the moment, having set a world record recently on April the 9th. And Karui, he looks so easy. But Shadrach Hoff does too, and he's just a meter behind. I believe it all goes down with speed. Definitely Shadrach Hoff has to have an advantage here. He's run some great street miles. He's run some good 1,500 meters at altitude. He's run 746 already for 3,000. And Karui's best time, I think, is 735. But here's the splits. 242 for the first K, 3K at 240 there, the fourth kilometer at 243. This is consistency, Paul. It certainly is, but just looking at the running clock, the athletes in the home straight, they're going to have to run the last 800 meters, very close to two minutes to break this record. So maybe the pace judgment hasn't been quite what it should have been. Well, Shadrach Hoff is one runner that can really wind it up, especially with 350 meters to go. He's run close to 55, 56 the last laps. But Tony Frost, what do you think of this race? Absolutely fantastic. Of course, you mustn't forget that another Kenyan holds the South African Open record, if, uh, if there's such a thing. 1307 William Segei in the African champs two years ago in Durban so the Kenyans have had, have a fine record here in South Africa as well as the rest of the world of course but wonderful running from Korea and uh, Shadrakov looks very comfortable he, I think they need to pick up the pace now quite a lot well every time a Kenyan distance runner sets foot on the track on cross country or on the road they genuinely genuinely are the men to beat but this time South Africa have found a real star of world quality his uh, South African record at the moment, 13, 19, 84. 
and that really in world terms is not particularly good but he's shown a lot of promise and i'm sure given the right sort of competition abroad can go faster so Karui now bringing them to the bell and this is going to be dramatic over the last lap i believe it's a matter of time now shadrakov to me seems like he's really taking it easy here he's waiting till 400 meters he's going to use his leg speed but you're going to see an explosion here and here it is the south african really starting to pull away now and looking so so relaxed doing it well, I tell you what, though, Karu is not finished yet, and remember, he's a class athlete. But uh, the crowd here is Stellenbosch. I'm sure would like to see their man beat a reigning world champion over this distance. Look at Karu, though. He's really piling on the pressure, but Hoff is looking so easy. He reminds me, really, of Nuradon Morsali, the way he just floats over the ground. The crowd have risen in front of us here, so we're going to have to concentrate all our attention on the monitor. Look at this every vantage point possible but here comes Karui now has Shadrach Hoff done it too early just turned 21 look at this fine running by the South African no he hasn't he's gonna win this race hands down he looked over his shoulder he said okay Karui look at this time 1325 so six seconds outside the record it doesn't matter Stellenbosch has seen real class athletics here in the 5,000 meters it's uh, Vester just coming through into third place, but Shadrach Hoff beats the world champion in the 5,000 meters. What I like here, look at this picture here. He looked over his shoulder. He had a lot of, lot of leg speed left. Boy, Kariri really tried to put the pressure on in determination with 100 meters left to go, but I like this upper body strength with Shadrach Hoff and all the confidence, Paul, the last 80 meters. Well, I'm sure we're going to see him in the World Championships later this year. Shadrach Hoff beats Karui in a fascinating five-kilometer race. Shadrach Hoff proved tonight that he could run with the best in the world and the world champ, beating the world champ in 13.25, a great time this early season. Ishmael Karui, second position, 13.26, and John Vestier, third, 13.37. Ockert Brits, of course, the bronze medalist at the World Indoor Championships in Barcelona, and of course the winner of the World Cup last year. The darling of Stellenbosch. This the arena where he set Commonwealth records in the past. Oh, it's so close. Well, this man surely destined one of these days to go close to six meters. It's not going to be on this occasion. Earlier on today, he was jogging very lightly because he had spasms in his lower back, and his coach was actually saying he wasn't sure whether he would vault tonight. But he's come out, he's shown his supporters, he's a man in form, but perhaps not in record form, and the technique deserting him just a little bit at the top of the pole. The turn is good, but... Uh, not enough, enough depth in the plant, and there he looks a little injured. No records tonight, but he wins the pole vault at 5,83 meters. That's one of the highest vaults we've ever seen in South Africa. Confirmation of that result, Ockert Brits champion once again in the pole vault. Tavonchik, who equaled him in Barcelona, he's beaten once no again in second. Yet. And the, the Finn the finishes the title, but it looks as if it's going to the United States and to the shot putter CJ Hunter. Just confirmation on the results of that marathon over there in Boston. Elana Meyer was second. The winner, Uta Pivig of Germany, and Valentina Yegorova of Russia was third. Well, all roads lead now to Durban and the National Senior Championships in a fortnight's time. From Stellenbosch, good night.